I'm Jamie from We Need Movies and I'm doing a little different video today. I wanted to kind of explain my background. Uh, I've been trying to make my background a little more dynamic, a little more YouTube city. I mean, I don't have Brandon's Blu-rays for a good background, but I wanted to talk about these kinds of posters I've been getting. Now, these posters are foreign. You order them on Amazon. They take about a month to get to you, but I wanted to show you what those were. So they're made of tin. There's printing on the tin. So I'd found a couple of them. They're European posters, but they're really hard to find otherwise. And it took about a month to get them, but we did. And I was kind of disappointed because these, the screen, the transfer was a little fuzzy. It was a low quality image. You know how when you try to make a poster in general, you blow it up, it starts falling apart, pixelation and whatnot. I took the chance and I ordered them, uh, hoping that they were going to be a good quality. And sure enough, the majority of them were. My roommate got E.T. and that was a really well done print. I had got these now. There are a couple I ordered purposely because they were different than the traditional poster, but I love the design. So first and foremost, here is the 1982 version of The Thing. Beautiful transfer. Uh, see, a lot of these movies that are iconic have really good high quality images online, which is where I think these companies who make these kinds of posters take the image from. But the, the image quality is fantastic. You can read all of the text on the credits in the bottom. Everything's beautiful. The iconic poster. Just love that poster so much. I had to get it. And Star Wars, I want to get the original one. Not the remake. Or not the digital remaster posters. I don't care about those. Those are so boring. I mean, it was more about these with the original artwork. And it's just a beautiful look to it. The old 70s posters had a, had a distinctive feel to them. They weren't like they were now. I mean, there's a lot more white and yes, as you can tell, these posters have white borders, so it does make a little different. Uh, if you could find some that are completely white and around the edges, it does help blend it in. Otherwise, you have like for the Star Wars, you have a clear demarcation of where the poster ends and where the border begins, much like the thing. Then we have the Lion King. This is one of the alternate posters I was talking about. This is like essentially the last scene of the movie. I've seen this on some promotional material, but Mufasa is dead in the clouds. Simba is on the Pride Rock, and he is now king of the animal kingdom. He has no credits. It's a really beautiful bear design. I love it. And it was just something that really spoke to me. It was very vibrant, yet subtle. And this poster is my favorite movie of all time. That is the original Back to the Future. I will eventually get all three of them. I love all three of them unabashedly. I think they are the perfect trilogy. Sorry, I know Star Wars and Indiana Jones are great, but I just love this trilogy because it references itself. It, it goes back to its first movie. It's so great. I love how cohesive it is. This is another alternative poster. Now, the Nightmare on Elm Street poster is great. I love the original poster. I like all the posters. They're all a pretty cool artistic design. But this one is like a German poster and it had such a badass look to where he was ripping through this paper of the town. Like the town was just a essentially a, a backdrop, a matte painting, if you will. And I just loved how his claws came through. Even if he only had three claws come through, it was really weird. Kind of looks like Wolverine for some reason. Uh, but the only thing is, this is the one I was referring to earlier. This is the one that had bad transfer. It looks pixelated. This is probably a harder to find image. I, I don't really, I didn't try to research it, but I guarantee this is probably harder to find. And this image is just just falls apart. And these posters aren't that big. I think they're about 16 by 24. They're, they're really small. They're not that big. They almost kind of remind you of like a sheet of paper. But this poster was too good to pass up. Even if I'm disappointed that the screen transfer didn't really work as well, I wish that it was better. But what are you going to do? It's a beautiful look to it. I love it. And I wanted to have it. So I did. I got it. This one is another one of my favorite movies. Uh, it is the 2012 Ryan Johnson film, the sci-fi time travel film called Looper. And this poster is just beautiful. I love the design of this this time traveler going to meet his younger self. It's a very cool idea. And um, yeah, I love this idea. I love this movie so much. And this poster is really sick. And it's one of the few that are white all around. So the border doesn't matter. It blends seamlessly. And I was kind of worried that maybe it would. Maybe the border would be a different type of white, like an off-white, and I was really worried about that. But this one really turned out to be a great transfer as well. This one is um, one of my, it's probably my favorite Wes Anderson film. Uh, the Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou is a great film, but this poster is so much better than the original poster. 
it's almost like Mondo did a poster of this. And this, the, the shape of Bill Murray's face in this side profile shot and then the hat makes me think of Ethan from H3H3 H3 Productions. I fucking love that so much. I keep looking at it and I keep laughing. But the, the wildlife, the aquatic marine life in his face is a beautiful design. Again, it's a white exterior, so you don't have to worry about any borders that show up. It's just a beautiful, very subtle design. I love it. And finally, another the final alternative poster is the Who Framed Roger Rabbit poster. I was going to get the original one, but then I saw this one. And it's beautiful, the fact that you can get this film strip Roger Rabbit. And then it comes out and expands into the scenes from the movie. I had never seen this before when I asked my brother to make that board for me that you always see in the background. Because that was my idea for a tattoo years ago. To have this film strip come out of the canister and then come into focus. And that was my that was going to be like a massive back tattoo, but I decided to have my brother draw it instead. But I wanted to have something on the other side of the wall to kind of balance out the image of the shot you know so it's not just me and my brother's board it's also now these amazing posters so and i wanted to give you fans here uh, at we need movies a closer look and that's why i did this video so uh they are by the way they are roughly 7.8 inches by 11.8 inches so about 8 by 12 so think about a sheet of paper in your wall that's why i put them all together i'd love to have a wall one day completely covered with these things they're beautiful and oh yeah, and they're about ten dollars a piece. They're not too expensive. Some are some are cheaper, by the way. Some are four or five bucks. They're definitely worth it, I would say. And you can easily find yourself in a little bit of a uh, collective craze by getting these things. So, I'm Jamie from We Need Movies, and until one of our next reviews, we'll see you later.